Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Have Gun, Will Travel. Original air date is January 17th, 1960, and the title is French Leave. Let's get into it, and I hope you enjoy. I am not usually hired as a guide, Monsieur Poulain. But since you are unfamiliar with our western frontier, this is one trip I wouldn't want to miss. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Yes? Mr. Paladin? Oh, good morning, Miss Wong. Come in. I come by room many times. Knock on door, you not in. Uh, what did you want, Miss Wong? Oh, not me, Miss Wong, not want anything. It's him. Him? Him. Who? This man talks funny. He come look for you one, two, three times. He want to see you very bad. He talk funny, not plain like you and me. Oh? He here now, right outside door. Well, then show him in. He's a... You come now, Mr. Paladin Hall. Merci infiniment, merci. Hey, hey. Ah, uh, bonsoir, Monsieur Paladin. Permit me to make your acquaintance. Je suis Jean-Jacques Poulard de la Sûreté Française. <laughs> Monsieur Poulard. You is a violent talk funny. Uh, yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes, Miss Wong. <laughs> Must go now. Have many do Yes, thank you, Miss Wong. So, Monsieur Poulard, you're with the French Secret Service, no? Oui, Monsieur. What can I do for you? Oh, Monsieur Paladin, I need help. What kind of help? I need a guide. A guide? Well, that's not exactly in my line. Ah, uh, monsieur, I search for a dangerous man. He has escaped from La Santé prison in Paris, and I have searched and searched, and now at last I know where he is. Where? In your Sierra Mountains. Well, why don't you go get him? No, 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 monsieur, you do not understand. I am a city policeman. Paris, Marseille, London, New York. I trail my men in these places, and I am formidable, but... Yeah, the West, monsieur, the mountains, the wild animals, the uh, Indians. I don't know about these things, monsieur. Oh, do you want a guide or a bodyguard? But perhaps both. My services aren't cheap, monsieur Poulain. Ah, no, I am prepared to pay. The Sûreté understands these matters involve expense. Ah, yes, uh, very well, then. Uh, let's say a thousand dollars in advance. Oh, la la. That is, as you say, not cheap, but, uh, d'accord. Very well. Now... How long will it take to assemble the expedition? Expedition? Bien sûr. What will need pack animals, I imagine, and native bearers? We'll leave in the morning. In the morning? Yes, Monsieur Poulard, at dawn. Just the two of us. Uh, but, but uh, Monsieur, I, I thought... Monsieur Poulard, uh, what does your name mean in English? A Poulard? The chicken? That's what I thought. See you in the morning. <laughs> Again, for the 11th straight year, Camel outsold every other cigarette. Filter, king size, and regular. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. So if you're smoking more now but enjoying it less, change to Camel's. Get more real satisfaction every time. Start to really enjoy smoking again. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, have a Camel! Uh, 
Uh, Monsieur Poulard. Oui, monsieur. This man you're looking for, what's his name? Ah, uh, Marius. Yeah. Who is he, this Marius? How many men has he murdered? Oh, we are not positive that he has murdered any, but we suspect him of many. Oh, but what has he done? Uh, he escaped from uh, Le Santé prison in Paris, and no one escapes from Le Santé. But he did, huh? And therefore, monsieur, he must be returned. It is a matter of the honor of the Sûreté. It seems like a lot of trouble to go to. Oh, well, the honor of the Sûreté must be upheld at all costs. Oh, oh yes, I, I see. Well, what makes you so sure this Marius is up there in the Sierra? Oh, monsieur Saladin, we French criminologists follow a very useful and profound principle. Oh, what's that? Ah, chercher la femme. Ah, yeah. find the woman, yeah. Ah, oui, and I found her in Paris. She had come home after making a small but adequate fortune out here in your West. Uh, entertaining. Ah, yeah. Monique had seen my man. Monique? You mean Monique Lafleur? Oh, yes, sir. Did you know her? Oh, very well. Oh, oh la 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 la. Ah, charmant, n'est-ce pas? Charming? Yes, I guess that would cover it. It was a crazy kind of a job. But I was never a man to argue with a thousand dollars, particularly when it involved no apparent risks. So we spent a pleasant afternoon riding along, reminiscing about our mutual friend, Monique Lafleur. That night, we stopped in Hangtown, where I introduced my employer to the dish for which the town is so famous. Uh, what do you call this? That's Hangtown Fry. You like it? Oh, Monsieur Paladin, I am torn between honesty and politeness. Oh, then, Monsieur Poulard, by all means, be honest. Eh bien, c'est exécrable, effroyable, dégoûtant. You don't like it, then? Oh, no, barbarous. There he is, Red. The little one with the pointy mustache. He looks like a Frenchie. He talks like a Frenchie. How about it? You a Frenchman? Oui, monsieur, I am. And who are you? They call me Big Red, and I'm here to tell you Frenchies ain't welcome in Hangtown. We're just passing through. Well, I'm thinking you're going to pass through real fast. How about it, boys? <laughs> we don't take kindly to having our women stolen. Last Frenchie come through here, made off with my girlfriend. I've been laying for him ever since. Yeah, but this, uh, this is a different Frenchman. Makes no difference. He's a Frenchman. Very well. If this is an example of Hangtown's hospitality, we'll be on our way. I'll see you will. Skag? Yeah, Red. Go heat up that kettle of tar behind the livery stable. Sure thing. And a couple more of you rip up some feather beds. You're going to be on your way, Frenchie, on a rail. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, this Frenchman who ran off with your girl, what was his name? I don't know. Everybody just called him Frenchy. Well, was it Marius, by any chance? Well, yeah. Come to think of it, I did hear Lola call him that. Marius, honey, she said. Uh, filthy French. Well, then we have no cause for argument. My companion is from the French Secret Service. He's on his way to arrest this Marius. Yeah, well, he's got to find him first. Oh, he will. Good. When he does find him, he can show him his torn feathers. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid we can't wait for the party, Big Red. All right, now stand back, all of you. With your hands in the air. No, no, wait a minute. You heard me. Stand back. All right, Monsieur Poulain, outside. You... Get our horses unhitched. Oui, Paladin, tout de suite. And the rest of you stay where you are until we're out of town. Now, I'll shoot the first man comes through this door. Here is your horse, Paladin. Good. Now, as you say in your country, let's fish a car. Constipation can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, X-Lax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolated X-Lax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. 
X-Lax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use X-Lax with complete confidence. X-Lax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Is X-Lax in your medicine cabinet? <laughs> On a bright night, you can see your way by the stars in the Motherlode country. We took advantage of this ghostly illumination to put a number of prudent miles between ourselves and the vengeful and unreasonable citizens of Hangtown. At last, we pulled up on the banks of a little stream and made a cold and cheerless camp. The next morning, the sun was up first. Then, quite a bit later, I got up. The little Frenchman was still curled up in a pitiful ball, twitching from time to time with nightmares of tar and feathers. I looked around and saw a bearded, red-shirted miner working his way up the stream, panning the river sand for gold. Hey, Mr. you pull out? Come on, time to get up. Come on. Bonjour, Paladin. Sleep well? Oh, please, do not mention it. I don't think I can ever move my arms and legs again. Uh, we have company. Oh, howdy. Hello. Say... We're a little uncertain of our whereabouts, friend. Could you tell us where we are? Well, this here's what used to be called South Fork. But folks have begun calling it Frenchman's Creek. Downstream, quite a fur piece, is civilization. Civilization? Yep. Settlement called Hangtown. Oh, oh yes, we're acquainted with Hangtown. But uh, what's upstream? Nothing much. A few abandoned gold camps. Cricks panned out, more or less. But I keep hoping I'll find something the others missed. You said folks have started calling this stream Frenchman's Creek. That's right. Why? Kind of crazy Frenchman lives up to the head of it. Yeah, Frenchman? What is his name? I don't know. Everybody just calls him the Frenchman. What's crazy about him? Well, he, he's got a claim staked up there. A couple of claims. Only he don't do no mining that anyone can notice. Got a place all fenced in, a big gate with foreign words on the sign. Only two words in English. They say, keep out. Well, how far is this place? Well, it's a pesky place to get to. It take you the better part of a day following uh -huh. the stream. Of course, the stream winds a lot. You could go over the mountain that way. Yeah, well, how long would it take that away? Mm, better part of the day. Well, then it's no shorter. Nope, but you don't get wet. <laughs> We went over the mountain, and it did take the better part of the day. Towards sundown, we came back once more to Frenchman's Creek, and there below us lay a well-built cabin surrounded by cleared land. We spurred our tired horses toward it, and a few moments later, drew up before a rail gate on which hung the imposing keep-out sign the miner had told us about. Marius must have put up that sign. His guilty conscience is haunting him. Perhaps. Well, should we go in? Paladin, I am tired, and I am hungry, and I am unafraid of these Marios. Come, we go in. Come on, boy, move. Get in. Stop! What? Put your hands in the air. I will relieve you of your weapons, monsieur. Throw them to the guard. Eh bien? Is it that you cannot read my sign? We read it. You made no effort to hide yourselves. I have watched your approach since you started down the mountain. We have nothing to hide, but it appears that you do. You are hiding your little derringer, Monsieur Paladin. Give it to me. Well, how did you know me? Your derringer, please. <laughs> Here. Merci. We have a mutual friend, Monsieur Paladin. Monique Lafleur. Oh, yes, Monique. She pointed you out to me once in San Francisco. And she told you about the Derringer. Uh, it was in the street of you, monsieur, and dangerous to reveal to her the uh, whereabouts of the Derringer. Under the circumstances, there was nothing else I could do. Uh, that you would know, of course. <laughs> eh bien, monsieur, you will proceed to the house. I will be right behind you with a gun pointed at your backs. Proceed. Paladin? Huh? This is Marius. Black hair, black moustache, scar over the right eye. And a pal of Monique's. That's Marius, all right. I shall ask him. Hey, monsieur. Oui. Appelez-vous Marius? Marius. Qui est Marius? 
<laughs> yeah, you are French, monsieur, huh? I'm French. Then you must be Jean-Jacques Poulard of the Sûreté Française. I am, but how did you know? Monique wrote me you were looking for me. Monique is a friend. Everybody's friend, it seems. <laughs> Dandruff bothers most men, most women, too. So listen. Today, you can get rid of embarrassing dandruff in just three minutes. Yes, with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. That's not all. Using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch Shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And never forget, gentle Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. All right. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, we are here. This is Shea Marius. You may dismount, gentlemen. You will stay to dinner. No? Yes. Oh, we'd be delighted as we seem to have no choice. Yeah, it is settled. I shall tell my wife. Come with me. Enter, please, gentlemen. Thank you. Cherry! Viens toi ici! Ah, ma petite chou, we have guests for dinner. Messieurs, this is Madame Marius. Oh, howdy, boy. How do you do? Enchanté, madame. Your first name wouldn't be Lola, would it? That's right. Uh, we met an old friend of yours in Hangtown last night. Big Red. Oh, is he still sore I ran out on him? He is. Poor slob. He never had what Marius has. What's more, Marius married me. And thought you to cook. <laughs> Come to fish fry, I guess I'm hungry. We oui, cherry, too sweet. <laughs> a jewel of a woman, monsieur. A prize beyond price. But she speaks lousy French. <laughs> More coffee, Monsieur? No, no, thank you. It was, a, it was an excellent dinner, superb. No, not since I left Paris have I eaten so well. Oh, thank you, Monsieur. Imagine to find escargot in this wilderness. They are not quite as fine as our snails de Bourgogne, but they fatten well on my vine leaves. Are you have a vineyard? Oh, yes. I shall make my own wine in another year. And this uh, fromage de chèvre? From my own herd of goats. Ah. Oh, yes, my friend. We live well here. I regret that I must take you away from all this. But you are not going to. I must. I have a warrant for your arrest. And you have no guns. But don't you see, I cannot return to Paris without you. It would be a disgrace to me, to the Sûreté. Quel dommage. Oui, you see the position you place me in? Uh, regrettable. But consider the position of France. In what way? If you insist on being obstinate, you can ruin France. Impossible. No, no, listen a moment. You insist on arresting me. I refuse. Oui. You demand that the American authorities extradite me. I oui. refuse. The American authorities recognize my rights to freedom from persecution. You return to Paris and report this to the Sûreté. Uh -huh. The Sûreté brings it before the National Assembly. The Paris newspapers make it a cause célèbre. France has been insulted. The headlines scream. Uh -huh. War is declared. Uh -huh. A French fleet sails to invade the United States. It is repulsed at great loss at Washington, New York, and Boston. Uh -huh. The flower of French manhood falls upon the Atlantic beaches. France is defeated and forced to pay huge indemnities, oh, no. which weaken her economically until she sinks to the position of a second-class nation, thus unhinging the balance of power in the Grand Alliance and exposing Europe to such dangers of general war that the mind reels at the prospect and at last refuses to look upon the chaos it portends. Oh, no, no. 
Are you willing, Monsieur Poulard, to be responsible for such a course of events? No. No, I cannot accept such a responsibility. Of course you cannot. You must think of France. Yes, I am. I shall never see her again. I shall become an exile in this savage country where they fry oysters and eggs together. No, 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 no. That far I cannot go. I will not condemn a Frenchman to that fate. What else is there for me? Stay here with madame and me. Help me tend the vines and herd the goats and raise the chickens and the snails. <sighs> Can you think of a nobler activity than growing good things for the table? Oh, only sitting down at the table and eating them, monsieur. <laughs> So, that's how I left him the next morning, hey boy. Feeding vine leaves to snails. Snails? Yeah. Boy, oh, no likey. Uh, why a Frenchman eat snails when he can eat good things like uh, bird's nest soup and uh, sharky fin? Well, you know what the old lady said when she kissed the pig. Oh, roast pig good too. Hey, what'd she say? Chacun a son goût. Oh, you talk funny. <laughs> what that mean? That means, hey boy, everyone to his own taste. Oh, he saw. He, oh, nearly forgetting. A uh, uh, lady looking for you while you've been away. Oh, a uh, uh, lady? He saw. A lady talk funny, too. Uh, like uh, you just now. Oh, no. Uh, hey boy, was her, was her name Monique? He saw. Monique uh, Flower. Oh. Uh, she come back this afternoon. I won't be here. Just tell her to. Um... Hey boy, tell her to follow Frenchman's Creek east of Hangtown. He saw? Over the mountains for the better part of the day. For, for your, who, who? She'll find what she's looking for. Oh, this miserable cold. And to my sinuses. Haven't you heard about Dristan? Dristan decongestant tablets for real relief from cold misery and sinus congestion. Dristan is the revolutionary three-layer tablet which, for the first time, makes it possible to unite certain medically proven ingredients into one fast-acting, uncoated tablet. Dristan not only helps drain all eight sinus cavities, critical areas of colds infection, but circulating through the blood, Dristan's congestant reaches all congested areas, shrinks all swollen membranes, relieves pressure and pain. An exclusive anti-allergent helps keep breathing passages dry and clear. Pain relievers reduce body aches, fever. Vitamin C helps build body resistance. This is Dristan. Today, Dristan is widely imitated. But the exclusive Dristan formula cannot be duplicated. There's nothing, nothing like Dristan decongestant tablets. Gun Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun Will Travel by William N. Robeson. Featured in the cast were Shirley Mitchell, Harry Bartell, Barney Phillips, and Marvin Miller. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.